Yeah, this is the first time I've made a movie um, here in Spain. It was, um, it's been quite an interesting experience. I um, came here last year to, um, to check it out for Julio Fernandez and um, to see if it was possible to make, um, to make genre movies here, and, and I thought it would be. So it took us a while, a few months to get started, but now we're in our first picture, and um, it's pretty much like shooting in L.A. There's very little difference between the, um, between the crews. The style of work is pretty much the same. The equipment's pretty much the same. Um, a few things are different. They, they use grips a little differently. They use electricians a little differently. Uh, the production designer has a little more responsibility than he does in the, in the California style. But generally, it's pretty much the same. No, this is a movie that um, we chose for the Fantastic Factory. We wanted a first movie. We looked at a lot of scripts. We liked this one. We thought it had a lot of elements that would make it very commercial, that would show a lot of different types of, um, types of elements, um, action, effects, horror, romance, comic book element, uh, lots of locations. And we thought it would be a good test of Barcelona as a filmmaking location. Some of the uh, sequence is a very uh, interesting and it's, 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 it's very surreal. Um, and it, but it's the danger of getting too funny. You know, we are not trying to make it funny, but we want to make it something very, something that you've never seen before. The way uh, he's doing right now is that a cape, the, uh, we, we're really hitting off more about the concept because the most of uh, a Superman or any superhero, you know, they wear the suits and the, ca you, know, uh, you know, suits, cape and the pants and stuff like that. And we just don't believe that, <laughs> you know. So we just said, like, you know, okay, you know, um, we conceptualized, you know, what is Faust? Okay, it's his illusion, you know, hallucinations turning into, you know, manifesting onto his body. So he is actually transforming, you know, his imagination really turns, you know, transforming into his real, you know, thing. Now, cape and the mask, these are actually, it's, uh, it's his, his uh, uh, skin, you know, glowing into the cape. Yes, uh, well, I came here to uh, talk with Brian before once, but that's, uh, wait, no, way before. When I was in high school, yeah, I uh, came here once. Uh, just to go to the Dali Museum and uh, uh, also Plato Museum. I have never worked with him before, no, I met him in London and he came to see a play that I was doing at the time, which was a Jane Austen play called Emma. And uh, it's very different from this, a completely different part, a very young, very naive girl. Um, well, I'm, I'm his doctor to begin with, um, but as soon as I meet him, I feel a very, very powerful attraction which I don't understand, um, because from my character's point of view, she doesn't have relationships with men, because she has a, a trauma from her past, which has stopped her from having any kind of relationship with men. <clears throat> but as soon as she meets him, it's very profound. So the relationship changes. I think for Jade, it's the first time that she can accept the animal in a man. She's always trying to separate it and for the first time she sees the beast in Jaspers and she loves it as much as she loves the man and that's the true love story. It's a great city. I've really uh, I've been here about five weeks now and I've really you know enjoyed it. Great food, really warm people, nice autumn weather, kind of like New York weather sort of. Um, uh, you know it's a very cosmopolitan city. I've really enjoyed it a lot. Uh, I play uh, Lieutenant Dan Margolis. Uh, he's a uh, he's a police detective, uh, and uh, he kind of feels that uh, something's going on out there. Generally, uh, there's a a big conspiracy afoot. Um, everything's kind of connected in some sort of way. He can't quite put his finger on. Uh, he really believes that uh, that something's behind everything. Uh, and he's right, but um, so he gets kind of caught up in this uh, 
cataclysm of events and um, sort of befriends uh, kind of befriends this uh, this woman and uh, you know kind of uh, gets drawn into it. I don't want to give too much away. Estic molt content to stay here. We usually get done in about between three and four hours. So, uh, yeah, but it's about an hour and a half to put the first stage, to put all the facial <coughs> effects on, and then another hour to paint, and then um, and then I have to put the full body suit on, and that takes probably probably about three to four hours. So it's it's it's, it's an ordeal with these guys. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no, they uh, they treat me very well. Well, you you found me at a fairly extreme stage of the film in terms of my character, as you can see. Um, he starts <laughs> life as an artist, um, loses his girlfriend, she's murdered, and uh, as a result, sort of loses all hope, and uh, then sells his soul to the devil, who offers him uh, the power of vengeance, and. Uh, and uh, becomes a, a sort of killer in the service of the devil uh, and then decides to end his contract with the devil, starts to care again and as a result uh, suffers greatly and those around him suffer and uh, he sort of becomes the figure you are beginning to see now um, the, uh, and, and goes up against the devil. Um, it's basically a comic book uh, superhero type character um, but also tied in with, with the original version of Faust, about a guy who uh, obviously sells his soul to the devil and then renounces that contract. Yeah, it is, yeah. Uh, I, the only uh, Brian Usner movie I'd been familiar up until now with was, uh, was actually Society, which did quite well in, in the UK, um, and which Screaming Mad George was involved with as well, uh, with the prosthetics on that. So I knew that was my only experience of both of of their work, really. Um, so yes, yeah, first time working with both of them. Jade rescues Jaspers. Um, she, at a time when he sold his soul to the devil, given up all hope, she believes in him, and consequently he starts to believe in himself again. Um, she is the sort of, the, 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 the very strong woman who gives him the strength to oppose the, 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 the devil and his own demons. And I think she stands for not only love and romance and c compassion, but also for, the, uh, for free choice and the fact that you can shape your own destiny and that, 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 that um, your life isn't just mapped out for you, that you have the power to choose. So I think on, on both a, a philosophical level and an emotional level, she's a, a key figure in the film.